Hi, my name is Jeff. Tonight we're going to talk about linking two flows together. You see there on your right hand screen where you have flow one and flow two. We're going to actually make flow two start after flow one has run. And these are two individual flows, right, that you have in Power Automate. There's lots of reasons why you might want to do this. Maybe you've hit the limit of how many actions you can have in a flow. Maybe you just want them separated. You want to trigger somewhere else and end somewhere else. Whatever your reason is, this is a video how we put those two flows together. It's really not that tough. We're going to walk through it. If you follow everything that I'm doing on the screen, you'll be able to build this in your environment in less than probably 15 minutes. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to it. All right. So over here we have, we're going to walk through the, the instructional document that I've created. And this is available in book format on Barnes and Noble and on um, Amazon and on uh, Lulu. So you can go ahead and take a look for these books out there. Just search for my name, you'll find them. But let's go ahead and get started. This, we're going to start here with the list. And the list here is two, two, two columns, question and answer. And actually you only need one right here. I've renamed title to be question right there, single line of text. And then I added answer to, but we're really for this demo, we're only going to use this and we're going to want to see data one and data two inside that list when we're done. Next thing we want, next step is that we're going to create a new solution to create a new solution. I'm in power automate. Although if you're in power apps, you'll see the same thing. It's called solutions right here. When you click on solutions, you're going to pull up this information right here. You're going to simply click on new solution right there and you can follow along right here and then you're going to give it a name. Okay. Uh, right here. And then the publisher, you can add a new pub. I don't talk about publishers here. Just click on the default for this test. It works great. Then you can add some other information. We'll start off there and then there's a create button at the bottom. So we've already done all of this, so we're not going to do it again, but that's how that works. Next step, we're going to create a flow. Now, these flows you can create, um, for example, here. I don't know what it's going to do since I have it open. Okay, good. So here we can create this a flow from here, automation, cloud flow, instant. So that's what you're seeing right here. Or we can say add existing automation, cloud flow, click on it, and then find uh, the flow that we want. So I built start one as a native, right, new, and then start two, I imported just to make sure that we're testing everything. So you can do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the flows themselves. The flows themselves are pretty easy. This is start two, so we want to go start one. So the first thing we do in start one, and you can see the flow uh, right here. We don't have to go into detail. We're basically creating data one as a variable. And then we're plugging in, there should be a site address there, obviously, into this list right here. We're going to plug in variable one. That's the first thing we're going to do. Now I know run a child flow is on the screen, but ignore that for right now. Then step number two here, we're going to flip over and create the second flow. And the second flow looks just like the first one. Variable two, string, data two, right? We're going to create the item there in SharePoint. But the one thing we're going to add is right down here at the bottom. And I just made this up. It doesn't matter. I took this. Actually, I read this from somebody else and I used what they did. But you can put anything here. Completed flag one. Okay. It just wants to see a response. I don't know why, to be honest with you, but it needs to see this. Without this in the child, remember, we're working on number two here. Without this, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So you got to have that. So. No big deal. Now we go back to, to number one here. Um, where was it? We go back to number one and we add this, which is run a child flow. Now run a child flow is only in solutions. It's not in my flows. Okay. So run a child and we're just pointing over to that child flow. Okay. And that's it. And literally that's it. So let's go ahead and see this run. And um, so we're going to start here at number one. It's going to go to number two. And what we're looking for is this right here. We're looking for data one and data two to be in the question column. Now you can see here that um, there's no data in this column right now. 
Okay, so start one. There we go. I'm going to run test. I'm going to say manual. And I went ahead and said run test. You all have done it. Notice it went through. It should go through it very, very fast, right? And here, notice um, this is our second float. Doesn't say that it ran, right? But when we go over to here, we see data one and data two. So we know that it actually ran and it populated those fields. So this was the first flow and then this is the second flow. Pretty cool, huh? Now, where are these flows and how can I manage them? Now you can see that they're both right here and I can click in here and actually look at them and edit them if I want to. So, or I can again go to the solution itself now because I have these open on different tabs and I can click on for example, here, I can say edit. And you can turn it off and, and do some other, there's other features that are within this solution, as you see here. But it's pretty straightforward. That's, that's pretty much it on how you create uh, two flows uh, to kind of connect with one another.